so it is the week after Splody Day. It is. So do you want to guess what happened? People blew parts of themselves off. Not all parts. Across this wonderful country. Well, yes, but we're not covering them because, well, we don't do people getting hurt normally right. on my show. But they, th this guy went above and beyond. But first, let's get our let's get our intro rolling here, like we always do. What are you guys doing? Horrible things they don't that they don't want you. I to just know. heard crash, jingle, 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 jingle. Yeah, that that that's typical. That is typical. All right, let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And I, I, I do not know anyone who is comfortable around wasps. And I'm not no, talking about white. Assholes. I'm not talking about white Anglo-Saxon Protestants either, but, but I do know they're, some people who aren't. They're often assholes. Yeah. But like, I'm married to technically one he's not as repressed but you know the the wasps are scary because they're psycho little bastards they're fucking monsters so i get that wasp will set people off to extraordinary lengths like our cats are little bug murderers and i am worried for the day a wasp gets in the house because Dottie will try to eat it alive because she likes her food raw and wriggling and her face is going to blow up like a balloon like i I'm terrified for the day a fucking wasp gets in this house. Yeah, well, at least, uh, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, you probably have to restrain Dan, too, because guess what happened? Uh-oh. Well, Dan's in bed. He's sleeping. Man tries to kill wasps, <gasps> but sets off fireworks and destroys garage instead. Did he try to... Blow the wasps up in a really pretty way? <laughs> it's perfectly reasonable to see a bug and feel the need to wipe it off the face of the earth with hellfire. That's a quote from a CNN story. <laughs> and see, they're not lying. Yeah. Actually, setting a fire, though, is usually not part of the plan. Mike Tingley from Grand Blanc Township, Michigan, presumably did not intend to burn his standalone garage to the ground Monday night. He just wanted to clear out some wasps. His solution? set off a smoke bomb inside the structure. That's not a solution. I mean, they do use smoke to calm bees and wasps because it will put them in, not to sleep, I think, but it like puts them in a daze. Well, but this is not the way to do it. Soon after his DIY extermination attempt, a neighbor noticed flames coming out of the garage. By the time firefighters arrived, the building was completely engulfed. And guess what, guys? I've, I shouldn't laugh. I hate to laugh. I love to laugh because we got video. And this video is amazing. Here's what happens when you burn down your garage with fireworks. It's pretty. I bet you the wasp got away, too. <laughs> so wait for it here. Here it comes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't help but laugh. Because <laughs> there's Roman candles and shit going off. I hope there wasn't a car in there. <laughs> well, there isn't any more. That's for damn sure. I really, really, really fucking hate spiders. Since one of those little bastards tried yes. to take my leg. Yes. I don't like them. I don't, I don't fuck with them. I'm not interested in spiders. Don't tell me they eat the other bugs. Fuck spiders. Now I'm going to burn my house down. I, it's just, it... <laughs> The thing was, he set off the smoke bomb, but he had stored the fireworks in the garage. Hello! You gotta think about if you have flammable shit in there. Yeah. yeah. Look, for one thing, setting off a fire in any kind of garage is your worst possible idea. Because yeah. cars leak all sorts of flammable liquids. That's normally where you store... And let's say, yeah, you got a lawnmower. 
Runs on fuel, where do you keep it? Garage. You got a car, it needs oil, where do you keep it? Garage. There's a lot of flammable shit in there. Cleaning stuff. All combustible. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Do not. WD-40. Setting off a fire at any indoor area is your worst possible option unless you want that to be an outdoor area permanently. Yeah. That's kind of a, a really big fire pit. Yeah, that's, it's a bit of a radical remodel, let's say. But, uh, you know. Furthest I ever went to kill a wasp, I did spray the shit out of my bathroom with Clorox cleanup. Because I didn't have bug spray. So, luckily, I mean, it was cleaning stuff in the bathroom, so whatever. You ever notice how I, I, I've done that, too? When it comes to a wasp, you pick up the first spray can you can find. Doesn't yep. matter if it's pesticide or not. It or could like be ham. Pa Doesn't ha fucking matter. Hairspray, Windex. You just and pick I up. was like a fucking sniper <laughs> with that Clorox cleanup until I finally got him to fall into the sink and then I washed him down the drain. Yeah, whatever it's a wasp, you just pick up the first shit to spray. It didn't matter what you could maybe spray paint, you wouldn't care. Doesn't matter. Yeah. You could be like graffitiing your entire kitchen. She's like, you don't care unless the wasp fucking dies. As long as that fucker gets it. Oh, well, next up. Oh, God. This. Yeah, okay, let's let's go back in the day for you and me. Remember back in the day before the iPods and the Pandora and the Napsters. If you really wanted to hear a song and the album wasn't out yet, and even if the album was out and you couldn't buy it, what did you do? You got a blank cassette and you waited for it to come on the radio and hit record as fast as you could and probably got the DJ talking over any musical intro. Yeah. And in order to get them to play it, you, I did this too, would call up the radio station and tell the DJ to play the song. So that was the first, that was the nice part of this. I'm like, oh, I remember this back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I, I even had this. a little pink boombox. Well, this guy just took my nostalgia and drowned it in a toilet. Man in custody after standoff outside KISS 108 radio studio in Medford, Massachusetts. Police took a man into custody Monday afternoon after a tense two-hour standoff. Man, who police have identified as 38-year-old Richard Newton, quickly handcuffed by officers after emerging with his hands up from a car that had been surrounded by police vehicles. A witness told NBC uh, Boston the man came to the area before 2 p.m., asked where the iHeartRadio section of the building was. In case you didn't know, iHeartRadio is actually a, co a corporation name. Weird. They're, they're the reason radio sucks now. Yeah. He went they're the reason there are no fucking modern rock stations anymore. He went into the building, approached the secretary, uh, a secretary, requested they play the song My Axe by Insane Clown Posse and displayed a large axe. The man then returned to his vehicle, by which time police had arrived. He rammed a police vehicle, then threw the axe at police, but did not hit anyone. The DJ does not need visual aids. <laughs> Also, I'm pretty sure that's a top 40 station. They're not playing any fucking insane clowns. They're not playing ICP. You're at the wrong foot. That's not how that, 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 no. Genres, my friend. Show them. No. You need to learn genres. Yeah. I, yeah. Hip hop station is not going to play Metallica. Top 40 is not going to play ICP. The witness said the man had several knives inside the car and was also drinking beer in the car. Police continued to negotiate him by cell phone through the car window. At one point, he got out of the vehicle and said, quote, I guess you're going to have to kill me. <laughs> Abstruse fucking SWAT teams. How do they work? What are things you should never say to the police? Alex. Oh, look, the daily fucking double. Yeah. I know it's a little bit of a tangent, but there's a new business that just opened up near me here in Jersey. Mm. Everything, a lot of places in Jersey are BYOB because like a liquor license is hard to get, but like diners, you can bring your own wine and they'll pour it for you. It's very weird. 
So the new thing that spring, and there's like two or three already, are axe throwing venues. Yeah. You sign up, you, you pay for a certain amount of time, and they give you axes and a wooden wall. And it's BYOB. So you can bring a 12 pack of beer, get together with your friends, and throw axes. This is like really safe, I think. Wait, okay, so someone sat down one day, went to their local bank, and said, I need a loan to start a business. What's your business plan? Drunk people throwing sharp objects at a wooden wall. And they got that loan. The parent company owns several escape rooms in the state. And we've done the escape rooms and they're pretty good, but that's, this is their new branch. They're, they're, and it's axe throwing. They're probably on the Chamber of Commerce. Probably. I don't know what the name is. I don't remember. Um, <sighs> but yeah, it's BYOB. You can bring your own, your own booze and throw some axes. Back to the point. Um, this, yes, is, this is not how you get a song on the radio. No. Also, have you never heard the fuck of YouTube? Yeah. If you really wanted to hear this, I guarantee five seconds, go type in my axe ICP into YouTube. That shit will be up there, legit or they not. Did, they didn't make a video. Somebody made a lyric video. Somebody made an anime oh, music video of that shit. Right. Any or, song you could think of, there's an world, anime. Yeah, or like a World of Warcraft video. There's one of those two, yeah. Or something. Like, somebody has it up there. Uh, anyway. Back to, oh, fucking airlines. And why do we keep circling? Is right. What is shit only white people can get away with, Alex? Yeah. No kidding. Telling the cops to kill you? That's that's definitely something only a white dude could say. Mm -hmm. Um, Back to the airlines every goddamn time. With every week we have some fucked up airline shit now. I give the TSA a lot of shit, but sometimes, seemingly by accident, they actually manage to do their job. How, to be fair, they normally manage to do their job when the person they're catching isn't trying that hard. TSA recovers artfully concealed handgun at Newark Airport. And Ooh, I want that's, you, that's my airport. I want you to take a look at how he's tied this into his suitcase with little bows. Oh. He's 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 tied the gun into the suitcase with nice little little bow ties. Very 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 cute. A man en route from Jamaica to Newark International Airport on July 3rd tried to sneak a handgun under the lining of his suitcase of his checked suitcase. Checked, okay? He didn't he he didn't go through the TSA line. He said no, I'll put this in the air in the airport cargo hold. They'll never find it. Yeah, but honestly, I'm more comfortable with them checking it than wanting to carry on. Uh, it means he wasn't intending to use it in flight, at least. Agents discovered the 22 caliber gun tied into the suitcase frame during a routine bag check. Eight officers uncovered the gun, artfully concealed beneath the lining of a piece of checked luggage. TSA's baggage scanning system recognized the man's weapon. Agents They're going to do that. Yeah, it's if you check a bag, it's going through an x-ray machine. Yeah. Period. They're going to find your vibrator. They're going to find your flashlight. They're going to find your gun. How many how many dildos do you think? How many you might if you work at the TSA long enough, eventually you're a dildo aficionado. Yeah, you've seen everything that's out there. Every you've seen, very like the disembodied silicone ass. <laughs> You've seen the foot with the vagina in it. You've seen everything. I wonder if they have like it's Just like lonely businessmen. I wonder if it's like bird watching, only they have a book where they can I check off. Like a score book. Yeah. Like if 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 you see ten dildos, this like whoever sees the most dildos in a week, <laughs> everybody has to buy them a beer or something. Yeah. It's just it. Dude, we'd be the worst TSA agents in the world. We would. We would. 
we 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 would yeah we would have who's winning the dindo the dildo pool this week? Really, we just had a bomb threat, you asshole. <laughs> Yeah, but who's winning the dildo pool? You can't, you can't get guns through the TSA. Maybe if they're having a bad day, you might get lucky. But they're gonna X-ray every single one of the motherfuckers. Especially, they look at the stuff that goes into the hold of the plane surprisingly a lot more closely, and they look at the stuff that goes through the scanner when you go through basic security with your carry-on. Yeah. I have carried stuff in my carry-on. Everyone has done this. You really should not have on a plane that they let you go with. There was some con where they decided like that they were gonna go through our bags like by hand. Big and like it's full of costuming shit. And I'm like, I look like a psycho right now because of the shit that's in that bag. Like, luckily I'm not one of those people that usually has a, a weapon with my costume, but still, like. I had like boots with soles like this and then a fairy dress and like, yes, I do have multiple personalities, sir. Well, speaking of playing dress up, um, this, and you know, I, I don't know if this is just me not keeping current or if I'm just an old man, but there is this whole side thing on Instagram that's like model Instagram. Where yeah. models put you know, all these and influencers. Yeah, and I, it's it's just it hasn't quite been my way. My of... Instagram is like eighty percent pictures of my cats. Yeah, my cats at the shelter where I work. But this is a pop Sometimes like a selfie. But but this is apparently a thing. Apparently, you can make a living oh, yeah. doing it. It's a thing. So... Fire festival built entirely on Instagram models. Well, here's another one who uh, kind of didn't. Well, oh, you'll see. Naked model arrested after police tussle. Oh. Oh, well, she's a Kim K wannabe. <laughs> July 10th, an Instagram model unburdened by clothing was arrested after she struck and kicked several Florida cops who were summoned to a waterfront hotel where the woman was trespassing. The investigators... Brissa Dominguez, 25, was, cause, was causing a disturbance at the Edge Hotel in Clearwater. Uh, when Dominguez ignored a direction from the hotel's manager to leave the property, police were called. An officer, Richmond, uh, Richard Edmonds, arrived at the hotel. He, quote, found the defendant to be nude. Mr. Edmonds handed Dominguez a towel to cover herself. She used the towel to strike me in the face by swinging it in a whipping motion. As yeah, the, cops don't want a rat tail. As Edmonds and other cops sought to arrest Dominguez for trespassing, she kicked three patrolmen, attempted to bite and spit on one officer. Edmonds is on the receiving end of a mule kick from the five foot four, 130 pound Dominguez. Reportedly, SQ is the cops tried to effect uh, an arrest during difficult circumstances. Charged with trespassing, <laughs> resisting an officer with violence. Um. Minga's Instagram page is filled with photos of her modeling swimwear and lingerie. Her 74,000 followers appear to particularly enjoy her more revealing photos with prompt comments <laughs> like, quote, your butt looks so smooth and soft, and quote, I love her boobs. Is that supposed People to be People on your? the internet like naked chicks? Shut up. Also, her butt is, sw is smooth because of Photoshop. I Most women have cellulite there. Sorry to ruin the illusion. First off, why are you running around the hotel naked? Why are you? Well, that's if everybody knows if you're trespassing and they catch you, but you get naked, it nullifies the trespassing and they have to let you stay. No, no, it doesn't. That's not it's how like this works. It's like the donut to claim it is yours. That's not how any of this works. Once you get naked, nobody <laughs> no. can bother you. I, 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 especially, I love the cop was trying to be nice. He's like, ma'am, here's a towel. Here's, right. and she's like, oh, thank you. Wham! Ah! Ah! He tried to be nice. The dude was trying to, you know, I got her to just trying to, uh. Lady, when they tell you go, you got go. Yeah. This is some basic shit. 
And you should probably take your clothes with you. <laughs> yes! You can't just wander around the hotel naked. Trust us, from experienced con goers. You can't do this. How many times have we been to a camp con and somebody got half naked in a fucking hotel? Or wanders in a con space in their costume that's like four pieces of electrical tape and a thong, and you're like, no. Go put on some fucking pants. Back when we were doing Vampire Alarm, it was almost like bingo waiting for somebody to pop out of a corset. Mm-hmm. Which would bring any... And not necessarily out the top. No. The no. It, they all buy them two sizes too small. It, it would bring every role play to a complete screeching halt because there'd be all this serious bullshit. The Archon has found that you must be... Det- Holy shit, a nipple! Guys, there's a nipple over there! Everything. And boom. then you had... You had... You never... Like, they would always tout, like, this this hotel has a pool and a hot tub, and the pool was usually all right the first couple days. The hot tub was never okay. Like no. there was a film. Yeah. Like, like, like skin on pudding. Eh. Like the hot tub had skin, and by like the fourth day, the pool had skin too. That you would have to <laughs> physically break through to get to the water. <laughs> Not the same as bathing, folks. Not the same. I know it has chlorine in it. Take a fucking shower anyway. Oh, we got more airport shit. And this one has video too. And I'm just, I'm going to start with this video. And the only, uh, the only warning I'm going to give on this video is it's okay, guys. That's all his own blood. (laughs) Yeah, that, that's, that's your... Nice. It's okay. All of this is his own blood. Let's have a look. (laughs) Oh my god! Okay, so that happened. That's one of the, it's definitely one of those that happened moments. They just, he, he was flying from Moscow. Yep, stunned passenger. He's the DNC hacker, and they just told him what his work did. Stunned passengers have to strike down drunken Russian flyer covered in blood after he screams and punches the seats in front on flight to Turkey. Where was he bleeding from? They don't know. It trickled down his face onto his shirt, arms, and jeans. Um, According to reports in Russia... Cabin crew tried and failed to calm the drunk pastor down and resorted to restraining him. The plane eventually reached its destination. Police were waiting for the bloodied man on the tarmac. There's a whole lot of questions this, this story doesn't answer. Why was he bleeding? Why was he that drunk? What the fuck was going on here? What the hell happened? Peggy, get out of... No, no, get out of my makeup. Peggy. Peggy, I know you can hear me. Come over here. Come on. My anus is bleeding. No, 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 no. Peggy. Peggy. You can't move, Mom. You're on the internet. I know your weakness. You're naturally beautiful, baby. You don't need bronzer. Come here. I also, I want to play the video again just so everybody can see. This is a perfect moment of white person paralysis. Because if you look at everybody around this guy, they're all like... So somebody can get that? Can, can someone... Can someone please... Can someone do something about that? Um... <laughs> why? Why would you just... What what went wrong here? For one like, thing, I don't like flying either. I'm terrified of flying. Yeah. But I have I have my drama mean, I have my ginger ale, I go to sleep. 
I, I want to, can we get to, we, we have banned smoking on the planes. Yeah. With, can we stop with the drinks on the planes, please? Can oh we really God. stop with the drinks? I'm really glad Dan's not here tonight because he would be so angry at you saying that. This is what happens. Dan's like, look, as soon as they're serving, he's like whiskey. Some people, some people can have a drink or two and be cool on the plane. But there's always that one, th those assholes who fucking ruin it for everybody. And these guys have ruined it for everybody. I mean, you can say that about anything. Hi, come here. The internet wants to see you. They miss you. No, don't go in the hole. Come here, <laughs> come here dumb butt. Yeah, the hole moved because I turned it. That's crazy, huh? Oh my God, Peggy, come here. No, no, oh, and we're running. And we're running. That's what they do. No, I don't want to stop exploiting me. So it's I'm here. I am of the opinion we, yeah, you can argue it about a lot of things, but drunk and stupid is kind of something that happens way too much on fucking airplanes. Well, because people who are nervous about flying self medicate. I don't want to be impaired, impaired on an airplane because I'm so mortally terrified as it is that, like, I take a Dramamine and those make me drowsy as fuck anyway. I pound ginger ale like it was booze. Okay. Because it, it's, like, psychosomatic, calming. And then I just hope I go to sleep. It's also one of those place and time things because you look around an airplane, what's inevitably on your flight? Screaming baby. Mm. You know what? What what they have where you usually drink? No children. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess it's also, I mean, in most situations where people are getting egregiously drunk, you're not 30,000 feet in the air. And that's another tube. Yeah. You know what? If you're at a bar and somebody's being stupid asshole drunk, you can kick them out. You can leave the bar. You can. Yeah, you can't. You can't kick them you out. Can, of the plane. You can go. Yeah. Or just, you, you can't go to another plane. <laughs> You that's could that's kick true. them out of the plane, but that's a murder and that's right. a crime. It's yeah. one of the worst crimes there are. <laughs> Finally, tonight, everybody, let's see, where is this exactly located? Um, this is in Los Angeles. Here. Who here lives uh near Thousand Oaks in Los Angeles? Who here watching? If you're watching, live near Thousand Oaks. Um, be prepared to shit yourself. I am leaving you, leaving all of you tonight in mortal terror for your lives. Enjoy. Um, animal control officers uncover 80 snakes and a pool full of alligators at Thousand Oaks home. Wow. Animal control officers discovered a congregation of alligators and dozens of venomous snakes inside a Thousand Oaks home where twice in the last three years, a cobra has gotten loose and terrorized neighbors. Hours after investigators searched the property and recovered at least 84 snakes, Ventura County Sheriff's officials let the homeowner, Todd Cates, away in handcuffs. Just eight weeks ago, Cates' uh, next-door neighbor spotted a cobra slithering onto the property. They were spotted by driving a car over the snake, killing it. Best to determine the snake had come from the home next door, where in 2014, an albino monocled cobra had escaped and eluded capture for days while keeping locals on edge. That snake. I know was... monocled cobra is probably the name of the breed, but aren't you picturing an <laughs> albino cobra. cobra with a with a I nose say, monocle? I say. I say. I say. Chap, have you got a small dog I could ingest? Yeah, you say that. The snake was ultimately I, captured, but before, but not before biting a seven-year-old whippet named Tico. I read ahead. Yeah. More recent. What are you doing with all these snakes? Why do you have all these snakes? And alligators. What are you... And Mike says he lives near Thousand Oaks. What are you doing with all the, these animals? <laughs> oh, God, my producer lives near Thousand Oaks. <laughs> which means there's a fair to middling chance that none of these animals belong to this dude and yeah. that this was a mic prank because <laughs> i don't know if you guys know this about our producer 
our producer has a comfortable amount of disposable income and a really fucked up sense of humor. So the day he has your mailing address, you just start getting shit. So mostly I get nice shit. I got a hippo pimp ring. I got a Laura Palmer Funko. I have a farting hippo that's in my front room. Mostly I get nice shit. Nash gets gimp suits. Yeah. Yeah, I do. The, this the investigators had to drain so, the pool. You know, you get a package from Mike and you're like, maybe something good, maybe something bad. The the eight crocodiles. He had eight alle- uh, crocod eight cat crocodilians identified as American alligators. Eight alligators in his pool. Wow. I hope it wasn't chlorinated. So no. Saltwater pools are kind of the thing now. That would be okay, I think. Well, they're freshwater animals. Here, I'm worried about the alligators. <laughs> well, here's another thing. First of all, why do you have? all of these in your house like what are you fucking planning in your and second of all are they absolutely sure they found all of them no i guarantee you they've missed a few so now there are cobras in los angeles this is gonna be a reality show People shouldn't be afraid of me because I control the alligators. People should be afraid of me because I'll let the, the alligators, alligators out. Loose. If he says he'll let the alligators loose, he will let the alligators loose. I just... Why would you do this? I mean, I understand people like different kinds of pets, you know? I... I like snakes. I couldn't feed a snake, so I don't have one. But like, I had a friend in college who had a pet snake, and he would bring it in, and while we were in the art department all day, let me hang out with the snake. You don't need eighty-four. Like, I really like cats. I really uh, like cats. I have two. This, this, this is, this is not pets. This is a fucking zoo. Yeah, and I don't think gators are an appropriate pet for like a domestic area, anyway. I, it, 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 uh, I keep it, asking Dan if we can get a lynx, and he keeps saying no. Oh, that's not a pet. He'll eat you. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it. If if Grady ever gets loose, he's not going to eat any of the neighborhood kids, right? Or anybody's pet. He's probably just going to sit under something and howl until you come get him. Right. This this is the alligator. You know what? It, the property values kind of go down if your pets are eating the neighbors. Yeah. Do you remember that movie from the 80s, Alligator? Oh, vaguely, vaguely. Like somebody flushed an alligator down the toilet and it, it went lived on... in the sewer yeah. and grew to be like 20 feet long and it was this fucking monster. There's a scene in that movie where the giant alligator winds up in somebody's pool and eats a kid who jumps in. I can't tell you for how many years I had to, like, closely check a pool before I would go in it. And here's the thing. One, I'm blind as fuck and I didn't get contact lenses till my senior year of high school. So you're just swimming blind. Like, I can see that far without glasses. Mm -hmm. So, one, my entire childhood, if I was going swimming, I was blind as fuck. Two, can't open my eyes underwater. I can't. I never, I've never been able to. I just, I mean, I guess I could, but I, I'm like afraid. To, I don't know. So that fucking movie, that fucked me up real good for a long time because I never trusted that there wasn't some giant alligator in the water waiting to eat me because I couldn't properly see. I guess, I guess the first thing we learned this week is, um, this shit's not Raul's wild kingdom. You can't no. make your house into a zoo. It's not, you just, no, no, you can't, hell, even hand, even owning one cobra is a bit far for me, but. They're really dangerous. You can get the venom sacks removed if you want to keep them as pets, so they're not deadly, but they'll still bite the shit out of somebody. Yeah, they, they are still predators. You can make it so that bite won't kill anybody, but. 
your your house is not a zoo. We've learned that um Peggy, come here. Maybe you you want to take it a little easy on the rum and cokes on your international flights. Yeah, especially if you're an angry drunk. Yeah, suddenly you're bleeding and screaming and howling or paranoid schizophrenic in in a contained tube all the way up in the sky hurtling at incredible speed. Yeah, that's not a good place for anyone. We've learned that if you're trespassing, naked is not an excuse. No. You, you still got to go. You still got to go. You, you, it's, no matter how hot you are. You still got to go. You know, you, you got to go. We've learned, don't, if you put the gun in your suitcase, they're going to find it. It's a gun. They're looking for them. That's specifically the kind of thing they're looking for. Right. You know, there you can hide some shit in your check luggage, like Kinder eggs and shit. You can do that. They looking for the guns. Yeah. We've learned that um, if you want to hear a song, try YouTube first, not the radio station with an axe. That's I I take requests all the time, and I'll tell you what. I'm not inclined to request to, to play a request when people keep bugging me about the shit. I'm far less inclined <laughs> when you're threatening me with a deadly weapon. Yeah, that's not going to get you very far with Nash, you guys, just so you know. Because, like, if I got what I wanted every time I threatened Nash with a deadly weapon, we'd be doing this show on my private jet right now. Some motherfucker gonna show up at my house with a machete being like, You better play Queen! You better fucking... I want to hear it! You Which would be such a waste, because you'd play Queen anyway. I would. I would. It'd have to be like, You will play Taylor Swift. <laughs> play Blank Space, motherfucker. Yeah, you're just gonna have to go ahead and kill me. <laughs> and finally, we've learned... Yes, wasps, is, wasps are scary motherfuckers, but maybe... Try to use like bug spray, yeah, not fire in an enclosed space. That's because the structure fire is pretty fucking scary, too. Yeah, you know what? A wasp will hurt you unless you're allergic, but a fire, you day. Everybody's you... allergic to fire, everyone is allergic Every to fire. Every human on this earth is allergic to fire. Yeah, it, it if you if fire. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And there is no anti-venom for fire. <laughs> They've tried. They take the little fire. No amount of fucking cortisone. They take the little fire. They get a little test tube. They try to get the venom <laughs> in. The fire just doesn't cooperate. It doesn't work. It no. doesn't work. They've tried. 